You're watching the Physics Classroom's video tutorial series on Newton's Laws. The topic of this video is the force of friction. Here's the questions we wish to answer. What is friction? What are the factors that affect the force of friction? And what is the friction equation and how can we use it in problem solving situations? Let's get going. Let's begin with the question, what is friction? Friction is the force that resists the motion of two surfaces that are moving past one another. The cause of this friction is the inner particle attractions between the particles of, of material A and the particles of material B. They tend to weld the two surfaces together so that they can't move past one another. And the result is, when one up surface tries to slide past the other surface, those inner particle attractions begin to pull the two surfaces back towards one another. And this resistance force to the motion is what we call friction. There are many types of friction. One type of friction is known as static friction. This is the friction force that resists the motion of stationary objects as they try to move past one another. Static friction resists the onset of motion. A second type of friction is known as kinetic friction. Kinetic friction is the friction force that resists the sliding of two moving surfaces past one another. A simple brick and a piece of wood board are simple enough to demonstrate the difference between static friction and kinetic friction. If we take the board and put the brick on top of it and begin to tilt the board at an angle, the brick does not move down the board. It's the force of static friction that keeps the brick adhered to the board. But then at a certain angle, the brick begins to move. And it's at this point that the force of kinetic friction kicks in, and it resists the sliding motion of the brick across the board. These two forces are demonstrated in this animation. Now let's ask the question, what factors affect friction? There's two of them. The first one is the force with which the two surfaces are pressed together. We sometimes refer to this as the normal force. Be careful not to confuse the normal force with the weight of the object. Let's consider a physics book that we set on top of a wood board. The physics book and the wood board are pressed together and the wood board pushes up on the physics book with a so-called normal force. That normal force happens to be the weight of the book. But if we begin to add bricks to the book, the book's weight won't change, but the wooden board will now push up with more force to support the weight of both the physics book and the bricks. And then finally, if we begin to press down on the top brick, well now that will be even more normal force. The physics book and the surface will be pressed together with even more force. The second factor that affects the affects the force of friction is called the coefficient of friction. It refers to the nature of the two surfaces that are sliding across each other. It's represented by the symbol mu. The value of mu depends on the actual materials that are pressing against one another. Now let's talk about why increasing normal force increases the force of friction. At the microscopic level, all surfaces consist of sharp, rugged projections, which we refer to as asperities. It's these sharp projections that are in contact with each other when two surfaces are in close proximity. At the contact points, the forces of intermolecular attraction are the greatest. If you press down on the surfaces and press them together even more, what happens is the surfaces tend to flatten a little bit at the microscopic level, thus increasing the amount of contact between surface A and surface B. The result of this increased amount of contact is that the intermolecular forces increase, and as such, so does the force of friction. The second variable that affects the force of friction is known as the coefficient of friction. Every combination of two materials has its own unique value for the coefficient of friction. It's a number, usually less than one, though it doesn't have to be, that is unique to every combination. In the table you see here, there are seven sets of materials listed, and the coefficient of static friction is given. You'll find these values in textbooks, handbooks, and on websites. You'll notice that there's that listed here is a coefficient of static friction. There's also the coefficient of kinetic friction. Their values are usually lower. Now let's talk about the mathematics of friction, and that means formulas. The formulas have to have in them the two variables that affect friction. We'll start with the formula for kinetic friction. You see it listed here. The force of kinetic friction is equal to the coefficient of kinetic friction multiplied by the normal force. The mu kinetic, or coefficient of kinetic friction, depends upon the materials. That's usually given to you or found in textbooks, handbooks, and websites. The normal force refers to how much force 
the two surfaces are pressed together with. And we can usually figure that out if we draw a free body diagram for the situation. Here's the formula for static friction force. It looks much the same, except that there's a less than or equal symbol there. What's that mean? Well, static friction has an upper limit. When exceeded, the object begins to move. This animation can illustrate the idea of the static friction upper limit. Let's suppose we push on a brick, and as we increase the force up on the brick, it doesn't move. And that's because the static friction force balances it. Push with 10 newtons of applied force, you get 10 newtons of friction force. Push with 20 newtons of applied force, you get 20 newtons of friction force. Push with 30 newtons of applied force, you get 30 newtons of static friction force. But there's an upper limit, such that if you push with 37 newtons of applied force, static friction can't hold the brick in place, and you begin to exceed it. So the static friction force is anywhere from zero up to 37 newtons, but it can't be any greater than that. And once you exceed that force, that upper limit, the brick begins to move, and the kinetic friction becomes the friction force. You'll notice in this animation that the amount of kinetic friction is significantly less than the amount of static friction. Now let's use these formulas. Here's a kinetic friction problem. The coefficient of kinetic friction between an 86 kilogram desk and the wood floor is 0.38. What force must be applied to move the desk at a constant speed? The phrase constant speed is important. It implies a balance of forces. So the gravity force and the normal force must balance each other. Somebody's pushing on the desk and that applied force is balanced by the friction force. With a balance of forces, what we know is that the forward applied force is equal to the force of kinetic friction. Now because the force of kinetic friction is equal to mu times F norm, we can state that the kinetic friction force is also equal to mu times mg. If we solve for mg for this 86 kilogram desk, we get a value of 842.8 newtons. We can now say F fricked equal 0.38 times 842.8 newtons, and that comes out to be about 320 newtons. That's the applied force that balances out the friction force. Now let's try a static friction problem. The coefficient of static friction between an 86 kilogram desk and the floor is 0.45. What force must be applied to the desk to get it started moving? So once more, we'll assume that the, since this desk is at rest, the forces balance each other. So in the static situation, the applied force is equal to the friction force again, and the normal force is equal to the force of gravity. So if we go to do the solution, we have to begin with the idea that the applied force equal static friction force. And the static friction force is given by the formula mu static, that's 0.45, multiplied by the normal force. But since the vertical force is balanced, the normal force is equal to the gravity, which is equal to m times g. For an 86 kilogram desk, the force of gravity is 842.8 newtons. That's also the normal force. So now we say force of friction is equal to 0.45 times the 842.8 newtons, that gives us the force of friction. That's 379 newtons as the force of friction. The applied force must be a here greater than 379 newtons, like 379.0001 newtons. That's how you handle a static friction situation. So friction is the force which resists the sliding of two surfaces across one another. It occurs because of the intermolecular forces between the materials that are touching at those surfaces. There's two main variables that affect the force of friction. One of them is the force with which the two surfaces are pressed together. We call that the normal force. And the second is the identity of the materials themselves. That's expressed as a coefficient of static or, or kinetic friction. Now we've seen two equations for solving for force of friction. Both of them are mu times F norm and we've seen how to use those formulas in a problem solving situation. Now I'd like to ask you to help us out. If you enjoyed the video, why don't you press on the like button or even press on the subscribe button, subscribe to our channel and get notifications when new videos come out. And then finally, if you have a question or comment, we'd love to hear from you. Thanks for watching.